Good evening and welcome back. Uh, we were a few minutes spending some time on Project Lamb's channel, but we have more viewers on James Paul Humphrey's channel, so hopefully we didn't lose you, but you will be back here to watch. Now, some of you are going to see us on both channels, and so thank you for being patient. Uh, tonight I brought along a little picture. I don't know if you know what it means, but it, this picture, it sometimes it gets used a lot where we hear the idea just keep waiting wait keep waiting because it's a symbol for waiting i don't know about you but one of the hardest things in my life to do is to wait i'm a workaholic <laughs> i see pastor norm has dropped in with us it's pastor norm i was thinking about waiting when I, when you want concrete to dry it just never dries fast enough for us guys who work in those kinds of things. It's like trying to watch paint dry. Sometimes it's just hard to wait. But today's word is the word on wait. They that wait. And it's so important. Because when you look at the synonyms, it means to have, to expect, to linger, to delay, to stay, to remain, to stop, and to watch. And that's what we need to be doing so often our faith is that sometimes we just need to be waiting that the Lord will reveal himself and show himself to us. I found this other picture on the internet today. This is an emoji, and this is supposed to be the emoji for waiting. So if I hold this up, I can say to you, just wait now, just wait, just wait. It's coming, the answer is coming, just wait. Well, we don't want to spend a lot of time on pictures, but I thought it's interesting that when you begin to look, that waiting requires patience and long-suffering. And I don't know about you, sometimes patience and long-suffering is not a very strong part of my life. But anyway, the interesting part is patience and long-suffering is part of the fruit of the Spirit. So we should have, because we have the fruit of the Spirit in us, then we should be able to have patience and long-suffering. And with that, we should be able to wait. And I know sometimes it's not easy. Sometimes something that is very special or really good, you have to wait for it. You can't just hurry it along, but you have to wait. And I know sometimes we like to be in a hurry, but we need to wait. And it's the same thing with our Lord. When it wants something special from Him and we want to feel His presence and to know His anointing on our lives, we're going to have to take some time to wait. And when we begin to look at the scriptures, of course, David in Psalm 25, verses 3 and 5 says this, Indeed, let no one who waits on you be ashamed. Isn't that interesting? Indeed, let no one who waits on you be ashamed, and those be ashamed who deal treacherously without cause. Verse 5, Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. On you... I wait all the day. We're to wait. And as we're waiting, it's a time when God can teach us. I think sometimes when we need, I think when we see this emoji here, it has the almost a picture of kind of be quiet for a little bit. Just be quiet for a minute and wait. And I think that sometimes what the Lord wants us to do is be quiet for a minute and just wait. Because it's while the time we are waiting is when he teaches us, and gives us wisdom. And he tells us not to be ashamed because the Lord is going to lead us into a deeper knowledge of our salvation with him. When we wait upon him. Verse chapter 27, verse uh, 14, it says, Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. You know, isn't it beautiful that when we wait on the Lord, the Lord promises that when you wait on Him, He'll strengthen your heart. Isn't that beautiful? And that's what He wants to do is strengthen your heart. But it all goes back to waiting upon Him. Again, as we move along in Scriptures, over in 33 verse 20, it says, O soul, wait for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. You know, when you're going through difficulties and you're going through trials and struggles, we need to wait upon the Lord. Our world is going through a lot of problems and a lot of struggles right now, and now is a great time to wait upon the Lord. 
because I believe that you wait upon the Lord, you will see that, first of all, as the scripture says, he's our help. He will show you through his word and through his spirit that he's our help. And not only that, he's our shield. He's our protector. He's there to protect us. This reminds me of the full armor of God. To put up the shield of faith. So when the fiery darts are thrown at you, they will be quenched. Why? Because we wait upon the Lord. Well, David continues on. And he has got lots to say about this idea of waiting. Psalm 40, uh, the actual verse is found between 6 and 7, but let me just read it to you. Sacrifice and offerings you do not desire. Then he said, Behold, I come to scroll the books. And, uh, whoops, sorry, I'm in just one verse down too far. Verse 1 of chapter 40, it says, Wait patiently for the Lord, and he inclined to me and heard my cry. And then as you go down, as you're waiting patiently with the Lord, he then receives our sacrifices, our offerings. He, bring, he comes to the place of forgiving our sins. It is so beautiful that when we spend this time waiting upon the Lord, because he is there and he gives us good courage, he strengthens us. Again, David, chapter 40. Okay, let's go over to David when he talks about in Psalm chapter 52, verse 9. He says, I will praise you forever because you have done it. And in the presence of your saints, I wait on your name for it is good. You know, if you ever have a chance to do the study of the names of God, there is such a blessing when you wait upon the name of the Lord. If you look at the Old Testament names of God and you look at the, the I am's of Jesus, there is so much truth there that as you meditate on that and wait, and that's really what waiting is, is meditating on the word of God and receiving what he has for us. Then over in uh, Psalm 62, he says this, 62 verse 1 and 5, Truly my soul silently waits for God, for him comes my salvation. Then verse 5, My soul waits silently for God alone, for my expectation is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. In God is my salvation and my glory, the rock of my strength, and the refuge is in God. Trust in Him at all times, you people. Pour out your hearts before Him. God is our refuge for us. And how do we claim all that? Because we wait upon Him. See, God is a God of salvation, and by waiting upon Him, see, that's why I always think about how we need to have on the helmet of salvation, too, because when we when we're waiting upon the Lord, the Lord wants us to save our thoughts. He wants to help us. You know, as you get older, sometimes some of the hardest things to struggle with is this whole area of the thought life. You know, just thinking negative things and thinking in things that you, you know, from the past and in the future. And you worry and you worry and you worry. And we need our thoughts saved, as it were. Well, I believe the best way to do that is just to wait upon the Lord. And when we do that, he then strengthens us and helps us. Then again, over in 69, chapter 69, verse 3 says, I am weary with my crying. Thy, my throat is dry. My eyes fail while I wait on my God. David was saying there's times, sometimes when I have to wait, it's a long wait. Sometimes that, you know, you're in a hurry and that sign is that wait, wait for it. Wait for it. But Lord, I want it right now. Wait for it. Lord, I'm crying. Wait for it. Lord, I'm feeling the distress on my heart. Wait for it. Wait for it. It's coming, but it's got to come, he says, in his time, in his season. And that's why we need to continue to wait. Then over in Psalm 130, verse 5, it says again, I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, 
and in his word I do hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning. Yes, more than those who watch for the morning. His soul waits for the Lord. And he waits for the Lord because in the Lord there is a word from the Lord, from his scripture, that can give us hope. You know, you may ask the question, I wondered about it this afternoon as I was meditating on this teaching for tonight. Why did David talk so much? about waiting and it came to my mind that the reason he talked so much about waiting was because he was a shepherd and a shepherd had to wait for the sheep to grow up the shepherd had to wait for the sheep to mature he had to just be there and wait from sun up to sundown and then at night time as he became a, a gate for the sheepfold he had to wait until morning David was a person who waited upon the Lord. Well, as we move from David, we're going to go over into Isaiah now. Because Isaiah has a lot to say about this whole idea of waiting too. Isaiah 25 verse 9 says, And it will be said in that day, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him. He will save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. We will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Twice it uses the word wait there because Isaiah was saying, you know, we wait for him for he saves us. He takes us out of the miry clay. He helps us in the midst of our struggles. And then he goes on and says that he has waited for him. He will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Oh, I think again sometimes, oh Lord, restore unto me the joy of my salvation. Oh God, I want to rejoice again afresh anew that day when I came to know you as my Lord and Savior. Because truly, Lord God, you, when I waited upon you, you answered, you heard my cries, and you came into my heart. You filled me with the presence of your Holy Spirit, and now I can rejoice and be glad in it. Then over in Isaiah chapter 30 verse 8, he says this, Isaiah 30, verse 18, I should say. Therefore the Lord will wait that he may be gracious to you, and therefore he will be exalted that he may have mercy on you. For the Lord is a God of justice. Blessed are those who wait for him. Blessed are those who wait for him. That's you and me. That's all of us, people. We can be blessed in the Lord because when we wait upon Him, He wants to bless us and He wants to encourage us. Well, we're going to move over into one more verse in Isaiah 64, verse 4. It says, For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard or perceived by their ear, nor have their eyes seen any God besides you, you act, your or whom acts, for the one who waits for him. God says that when, he, when we wait upon him and we wait for him, he acts on behalf of us. Isn't that beautiful? He acts on behalf of us. Well, we've had David's testimony. We've had Jer Isaiah's testimony. Let's look at a few scriptures from Jeremiah. Jeremiah 14.22 says, are there any among the idols of the nations that can cause rain? And the answer is no. Or can the heavens give showers? Are you not he, O Lord, our God? Therefore we will wait for you since you have made all things. Jeremiah wanted to remind the people, Oh, you are trying and you are trying to live by all your ways and according to your wills. But Jeremiah was saying, it doesn't work that way. God is the one who makes it rain, and he's the one who withholds rain. He's the one who gives blessing, and he's the one who withholds blessing. And he is the one who has created all things, and that we just need to wait on him. Because the creator of heaven and earth is there with us, if we will just wait upon him. Then again, over in uh, the book of Lamentations.
I just got a turn there. I thought I had it marked, but I didn't put it there. Lamentations chapter 3, verse 26. It says, It is good that one should hope and wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. Do you notice how many times when we read this word wait, how it's connected to the word salvation or to the word saved? I believe that when you get into a place of waiting and, and waiting upon the Lord, He shows you a greater fullness of His salvation. That He's not just saving you as a sinner, but He's saving your thoughts and your actions and the things that you struggle with each day. We need to come to before Him daily and receive what He wants for us. Again, over in Micah 7.7, 7, and we're going to see this word salvation again. Therefore, I will look to the Lord... I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. My God will hear me. I will just look to the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. He is the Redeemer. We just have to wait upon Him. You know, again, just wait. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. It's going to come. Wait a minute. It's going to come. We just have to trust in Him. When we move over into the book of Luke, we have a, a, a parable that Jesus gives concerning uh, this whole area of a faithful servant. In Luke twelve thirty six, it talks about this servant. And it gives something interesting, you know, where it says about the difference between a, a, a good servant, a faithful servant, and an evil servant. And the difference between these two in this parable, the good servant waits, and the evil servant doesn't have time. Doesn't have time to serve and to wait for his Lord. Verse 36, And you yourselves be like men who wait for their master, when he will return from the wedding, that when he comes and knocks, they may open to him immediately. You know, those who wait for the master, God's going to bless. I got a little picture, and you won't be able to read it because my camera turns it backwards, but it says here on this little picture, if you got a mirror, you can turn it around, but what it says here, please knock and wait. See, Jesus is knocking at the door. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will be open the door, I will come into him and he with me, and we will eat together and fellowship together. What a wonderful time. But we need to wait. We need to realize that God, the servant, this faithful servant is one who was considered that he was waiting there for the master. He has time to wait for the master. Do we have time? as believers today, to wait for the Master. Are we so busy? That's really interesting with this whole, all, this whole thing of being locked down. There's not a whole thing, a lot of things to do. Oh, you can kind of walk around the house, walk from one room to another, walk from, you know, maybe go around the block for a walk, and if you're careful and all that kind of stuff. But the thing is, we've got time now to wait upon the Lord. This is a time that we could go in the morning or in the evening and wait upon the Lord and get our strength renewed, get our salvation broadened in our lives so that we can become anointed and empowered for Him so that when this season of time is over, that because we waited for the Lord, that the joy of the Lord will be our strength and that we will have the shield that be able to hold up and to push back what the enemy would try to, to throw at us. And again, you all know that in Acts chapter 1, verses 4 or 5, what does Jesus tell the disciples just before he goes and ascends up into heaven? In verse 4 he says, And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father. Which he said, You have heard from me. Because Jesus had talked about this many times. For John truly baptizes you with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Now, I don't know about you, but after Jesus died, he was with the, the people for a number of days. 
But this one, they had to tarry in the upper room and wait. This was a time of waiting. It wasn't going to happen in five minutes. It was going to happen in ten minutes. Now, some people were filled with the Holy Spirit right away, and that's what happened to me. I was filled with the Holy Spirit immediately. But others have to tarry. Others have to wait. And while they're waiting and seeking God, God's presence will come. And, and God says to the people to go into the upper room and just wait there. And as you wait for there, I will come. I will send my spirit because I have promised to do it. But you just need to wait. To wait for what the Lord wants to give. Again, wait for it. Wait for it. I believe if we would get down on our hands and knees and just wait for it, sometimes it might be 15 minutes, sometimes it might be an hour, sometimes it might be days. But if we wait, God will pour forth his presence on us and he will anoint us in power like we never believed was possible before. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Because that's what God wants to do. Again, over in Romans, Paul now gives testimony in Romans 8 23 he says not only that but we also who have the first fruits of the spirit even we ourselves grown within ourselves eagerly waiting for the adoption the redemption of our bodies eagerly waiting we have the spirit in us but we need to continue to wait for more upon the Lord and he goes on and says in verse 25, But if we, if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. You know, we're back to that word of perseverance and long-suffering. Sometimes we just need to wait. You know, we have to wait in Thailand right now. We can't go anywhere. There's no place we can go, nothing we can do. We just have to wait. But as we wait upon the Lord, we have sensed God's presence with us. We've sensed His peace with us. We've sensed His anointing with us. And we've been able to share that nightly with you so that as we wait upon the Lord daily, we can share with you how we've waited and out of the anointing that He gives to us by waiting upon His Word and by waiting in prayer, we can then send that forth for His glory. Then a gleam over in Galatians chapter 5, verse 5. It says, For those, for through the Spirit, we eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. Through the Spirit. See, I believe that waiting is not just our own selves, but because we're vessels and channels of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit helps us to wait. Did you hear me what I'm saying? The Holy Spirit will help us to wait so that we can receive the hope of His righteousness. Sometimes we get frustrated. Sometimes we get uptight. But what we really need to do is just ask the Holy Spirit to help us, to fill us, that we can wait upon the Lord and His presence, and He will strengthen us, and He will be with us in such a way that as we eagerly wait upon Him, He will then touch our lives. James, our last scripture for this time being. James chapter 5, verse 7. Therefore be patient. See, there's part of the fruit of the Spirit, brethren. Until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, waiting patiently for it until it receives the early and latter rain. James says to us, hey, be like a farmer. You know, he puts the seed in the ground, and he's got to wait. And when he's got to wait, he's got to wait for a period of time. And then he's got to see that the seed get nurtured, and they get, you know, looked after and, and hoed and taken care of. And then in due time, it will begin to see, receive the early rains. And then in due time, it will receive the latter rain. And if the farmer continues to be patient, then... As he waits, you know, wait for it, wait for it. I can imagine a lot of farmers going out in their fields. Well, you know, that part seems to be ready. It seems to be ripe. But that part isn't, that part isn't, and that part isn't. And you know what's saying in his heart? Wait for it. 
Get the equipment ready. Get everything ready. Wait for it because as you wait, then the harvest will be ready all across the field. And then you can bring it in. Oh, we need to have the fruit of the Spirit in our lives so that we can have that long suffering, that we can be patient and to be able to wait upon the Lord. It's interesting that as we look as a disciple, we are called by the Lord to wait and not get ahead of His plans for our lives. Waiting can also be a call to meditate, to seek His face and wisdom and understanding, a time to hear from God and then fulfill His will for our lives. That's what waiting is all about. Waiting, in reality, is dying to yourself. It's like dying. I know some of you don't got patience at all. And if you're like me, it's like dying. If I want to go someplace and do something and Colwyn's not ready and she's not got things in place and I have to wait, oh, do I get impatient and, and I have troubles. But I've learned that I need to wait. I've learned that I need to wait. Because when I wait, there is a blessing. There is a blessing. Disciples need to see that the benefits are waiting before the Lord. Quick charges don't last long and wrecks the batteries. Slow charges is the best. Heavy rain causes flood and erosions. A slow, gentle rain produces a bountiful harvest. Amen? That's what it does. You know, sometimes we want to go out and quick charge the battery in our car. But a trickle charger is better over a long period of time. Sometimes we want it to rain and then we let it ask for rain and it comes down heavy. And instead of producing a good crop, it hammers it down and destroys it. But a gentle rain brings forth a wonderful, wonderful harvest. Now, some of you may have thought, wow, he read all those verses in Isaiah. He read all those verses in Psalms. He read so many verses from Acts and from Paul. But, you know, I think he left out probably one of the most important verses that we all have memorized somewhere along the line. And I want to tell you tonight, I didn't leave it out but I was holding on to it so that I could share it with you in our conclusion. Because this is the verse I believe that we should memorize. I believe it's the verse that will empower us. We've been talking about that these tips are discipleship empowerment tips. I've been trying to share with you every night that if you want a disciple empowerment, it only comes through the presence of the Holy Spirit. There is no other way that you need the Holy Spirit to anoint the reading of the Word. You need the Holy Spirit to anoint your, your prayer time. You need the Holy Spirit to anoint your praise and worship time. You need the Holy Spirit there. And I believe that when we go to this final verse in our conclusion in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31, you know it, don't you? But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. What a powerful verse. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Is your strength being zapped from you? Wait upon the Lord. They that wait upon the Lord shall fly like an eagle. Do you need to start flying again? Have you been grounded for too long? Well, wait upon the Lord and let the breath of His Holy Spirit begin to gather under your wings because as you wait upon the Lord and allow the Holy Spirit to gather His wind under your wings, you will begin to be lifted up on high. Wait upon the Lord so that you can begin to run and not be weary. Are you getting weary? Are you getting tired? Has the journey been too long? 
Sometimes I think that way. I'm only 66, but sometimes I think, oh, Lord, it's been a long race. But then the Lord says to me, yeah, but just wait upon you, upon me, and I'm going to give you more strength. I'm going to be breath under your wings, and I'm going to help you run a little bit further. Amen. And then he finally says in this verse that when we do walk, we won't faint. Oh, people, how precious, how wonderful it is that we who wait upon the Lord. So, But those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings of eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And how is that all possible? When we call upon the name of the Lord, who is our strong tower. When we call upon the name of the Lord, who is our Savior. When we call upon the name of the Lord and ask Him to fill us with our, His Holy Spirit and empower us, we will be able to mount up as wings of eagles. We will be able to run. And we will be able to walk and not faint. I believe that. Why? Because it's a precious promise from the Word of God. And the Word of God is true. And where the Word of God speak it, it will happen. Amen? So receive it tonight. Be patient. Take time to wait upon the Lord. Amen? And I know as you do tonight, or if you're on the other side of the world this morning, you will enter into a newness and freshness that you never thought was possible. But it all begins by waiting upon the Lord. So let's just take a moment to close this time off, remembering that our empowerment discipleship tip for tonight is that will we take the time to wait on the Lord today? Because it's our choice. Because if we do, God will lead us. He will bless us. He will guide us. He will inspire us with His Holy Spirit. I believe that. Amen. Father, we ask right now that your Holy Spirit would continue to be with us and you would guide us. And Lord, thank you for the gem of this word. Lord, even though we may sometimes not have the strength to wait, sometimes we are, Lord God, such busy people. But help us to find time to wait. Help us to time, find time to come into your presence. Help us to find time to meditate. Because I know, Lord, that when we wait upon you, you will allow us to rise up like an eagle. You will help us to run and not be weary. And Lord, you're going to help us to walk and not faint. And I thank you, Lord God, that this is a precious promise from you. And Lord, we receive it now. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you for watching. And may the Lord strengthen you as you wait upon him. Amen. We'll see you again tomorrow.